our passion, our social mission behind Soap End is that hand washing with soap can protect one out of three children from infectious illnesses, respiratory infections. In places like India and Africa, this can be life-saving. Even small illnesses like diarrhea, when there is inadequate healthcare, hand washing can prevent over 50% of these illnesses. Soap Pen is a soap that makes hand washing fun for kids, so that even when they're being clean and germ-free and avoiding sickness, they're having fun. It's a soap that you can draw with on your hands, and then underwater, they intuitively thoroughly wash their hands. We grew up in India and we knew that hygiene was a big problem. We spoke directly to teachers about the challenges that they were facing and we realized that even if soap is donated to them, it's a precious commodity and they have to store it away in cupboards. That's when we really saw this as more like a design challenge that could be solved. We changed the placement of soap from the bathroom to the classroom so that they could draw on their hands and then they would go to the bathroom, wash their hands. Teachers can check for any leftover traces of the drawing to see if they actually wash their hands or not. For every three soap pens that are sold, we donate one to a low-income school where access to hygiene may be a problem and that's where we're able to make a positive impact. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chloe Malas, a reporter at CNN here in New York, and I am here with two incredible, fearless females, Shupam Asar and Amanat Anad, who created SoPen. So thank you so much. Thank you. So as we saw in this video, you two have created something incredibly innovative, and at such a young age, just 22 years old, explain to everyone how you came up with SoPen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we went to Parsons School of Design, grew up in India, but came to college for industrial design. Um, and after graduating, we were really interested in entering the social innovation sphere, um, particularly looking at problems in the developing nations. Um, and we found the UNICEF Variables for Good Challenge online. It highlighted a lot of problems that mothers and infants all over the world were facing. Um, something that particularly moved us was the fact that so many infectious illnesses, more than 50% could be avoided by just washing your hands properly with soap. Um, it was such a simple habit, um, and the fact that kids weren't doing it was really shocking to us. Um, so we wanted to create something that was fun, that would make hand washing a fun thing, rather than thinking of it as a chore, and create behavior change through that. And tell us about why India. I mean, I know you both grew up in New Delhi, but you didn't know each other until you <laughs> no. went to Parsons. Um, so why start things in India? Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of developing countries where this problem exists, um, but b being Indian, we obviously want to start there. Um, we know the terrain, we know the language. Um, so I think India specifically also because that was when we were in the prototype stage when we went to schools and tested it out. So we also feel a little bit more comfortable um, knowing that we, we will see this impact in the schools there. Um, but also in India what we saw in the schools was that in, in a low income school when there's one teacher to say 50 or 60 kids, it, was really, it is really hard for a teacher to make sure that every kid in the classroom has washed their hands multiple times a day. So even when the soap was donated to these low-income schools, which it typically is, the soap is stored away in the cupboard, and that was what was really shocking to us. So I carry Purell all the time. <laughs> I have a nearly two-year-old. I'm pregnant again, and getting sick is my number one priority to not happen. And I have a cold again right now. Um, <laughs> but you, I was learning from you all backstage that some of these schools, either they don't have soap, like you're saying, or when they have it, they don't even give it to the students. Yeah. Tell me yeah. about that. So we realized during our visits that soap is such a precious commodity because it's donated, and as Amanat said, it's one teacher to about 60 students, which is such a chore to line them up and put a coin-sized amount on each child's hand. Um, so teachers end up just not you know, giving out soap during midday meals. Um, and um, it's stored away because either would kids would go and like pump the whole soap out or just steal it and take it home. Um, so they were worried about that. And so we realized that while, of course, in the higher grades, teachers know the importance of hand washing when they're really young and hand washing is really important, they don't, they don't, they're not teachers, even teachers aren't aware that they should be washing their hands. 
Um, so that's where we came in. We wanted to make it easier for the teacher to use so pens they could draw on it. And fun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> really so fun. You're both 25 years old now, but you started this company when you're just 22, <laughs> newly graduated from Parsons. How do 22 year olds go out and start getting money and funding, and how do you know what to do? Yeah. Um, a lot of side hustles. I think we're still doing a lot of that. We, have, we definitely don't have everything figured out, but I think that's the fun of it. Luckily, I get to work with one of my closest friends. Um, and we've been really lucky in the US with such a supportive environment of women um, from the beginning with UNICEF Innovation, who gave us our first grant. Um, the founders of it were women. Um, then we did a Kickstarter campaign, which was, I think, as young women, one of the biggest learning experiences for us. Um, learning how to ask. She's better at it than I am, <laughs> for sure. Um, and with uh, the Halcyon Incubator and now Toyota and Women in the World, um, a lot of these organizations led by women have been just paving the way for us. So that's been really lucky for us. Yeah. yeah. What are some of those challenging moments? I know you guys just you two in the company. You don't have other employees. You're manufacturing here in the U.S. You're about to start donating to some of your first schools in India, but what are some of those challenges that you are facing in trying to get funding? Yeah, I think, as Manit said, learning how to ask was one of the biggest hurdles. Um, when we launched the Kickstarter, we expected a lot of people to just donate and magically have it happen. <laughs> um, but we had to, you know, sit down and call and really, you know, this is what I'm doing, this is my one question ask, and keep it short, and uh, just going out there and putting ourselves out there and not be afraid of rejection. And also, you were talking to me about finding mentors, aligning yourself with strong women, strong men who can help you along the way. Can you give some advice to young female entrepreneurs, perhaps, in the audience? Yeah, I think definitely the mentors have been one of the the, the most helpful things for us. Um, a, lot of, a lot of women uh, mentors, but also a lot of really great um, male mentors um, who've just been helping us you know, create all the right data points of this is what you need if you do end up ever raising funds. These are the thresholds that you need to, ma uh, to match. So even though we're early, we're just trying to make sure we're getting and hitting all those check marks so that eventually we can go out and do just, just that. So this is something, though, that is not just meant to be for India. You're yeah. also looking to take this to other underdeveloped countries as well and also make it mainstream? Yeah, yes. I mean, I, it's such a fun idea. I think um, definitely the beauty of the idea is that it is so fun. Um, yeah, the, exactly. So the plans are we're planning to go to retail. We've launched on Amazon as of October 2018, and it's been a whirlwind. Um, so... We're selling in the U.S. and we donate to low-income schools in India. And the hope is that the social good transforms to more countries. Um, hopefully, overall, we'll want to start manufacturing in India as well and, um, you know, provide jobs. So the social good but also transform over time. When you're going over to India and your pilot programs and you're speaking to these teachers and these students, what are some of the things that really stand out to you? Because I feel like there's such a disconnect between hygiene and some of an education. Yeah, I think um, the schools in India, the low-income schools and the high-income schools, we've noticed they have actually very similar challenges in terms of um, washing hands for kids between three and six. I think if you think about a whole classroom of kids, it is hard. Um, but with obviously the lower income schools, it's that soap is precious. It's not as easy for them to get access to it. Um, and I think there's just a lot of pressure on the teachers. So um, trying to just, our, I think our job is to just try to make it as easy for the teachers so that it's easy in the classroom. Yeah, the sheer number is daunting. Yeah. I think that's the biggest hurdle is that there's so yeah. many students to a teacher um, and it becomes more about the stress of the job rather than you know, the simple habit gets overlooked. And, I, and I was, you were telling me that you're speaking to some of these students who are even just five years old and you're asking them about their daily hygiene routines and they're not washing their hands really at all. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's pretty incredible though that you guys are looking to solve such a major problem that has such an incredible solution for so many people. So thank you so much for what you're doing. I appreciate <laughs> it. You.